This week, President Trump has been in Asia, working to reboot all the foreign policy he had already torched. And uh, so far, <laughs> his trip has been successful. He got on well with uh, Shinzo in Japan, and he didn't start a war while visiting South Korea. <laughs> but now we are on to the main event, the country in Asia that was one of Trump's campaign main villains. It went uh, number one, Crooked Hillary, number two, The Wind, and number three, <laughs> China. China's taking our jobs, our money, our base, our manufacturing. It's the greatest theft in the history of the world, what they've done to the United States. We can't continue to allow China to rape our country, and that's what they're doing. And let me tell you, it's them that's the problem. And they're gonna treat us fairly, and they're gonna treat us justly, or it's bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> he sounds like a racist Teletubby. <laughs> There's Lala, Dipsy, and then he would be Bing Bong. <laughs> Mexican children, bye bye. <laughs> so, if you saw Trump on the campaign, uh, you wouldn't be crazy to think that he was going to go to China, kick down the door, grab their president, and shake the factories out of his pockets. But for this visit, China was a step ahead. You see, for them, it was time for Operation Beijing Butter Up. In China, a lavish red carpet welcome for President Trump, complete with honor guards. On the motorcade route, excited school children waving American and Chinese flags. Donald Trump seems to be seduced by the lavish red carpet state visit. That's something. I'm, we're having a great time. Okay, first of all, I don't know if that was a red carpet or if Trump's neckties are just getting longer. <laughs> Second of all, who were those kids and why were they jumping? What was going on there? <laughs> but still, look how happy he is. Like, this is the part of being president that he loves. People parading for him, uh, not having to walk, <laughs> touching shiny things. That's what Donald wanted from the presidency, not meetings with Mitch McConnell. <laughs> and you could tell that Trump was slowly being seduced by his new Eastern friends. The president, of course, has had the uh, red carpet rolled out for him here. President Xi Jinping is trying to flatter President Trump. They all try to figure out how do you get to Trump? How do you wow him? How do you woo him? How do you seduce him? President Xi Jinping and his wife playing tour guide, taking President Trump and the First Lady to Beijing's Forbidden City and to a traditional Chinese opera. You can see the exact moment they told him Jackie Chan wasn't in this. <laughs> but, but shame, shame. Uh, like, you've gotta give Trump props. He tried. He went to a Chinese opera, and I, I respect that. Because I know what it's like when a friend forces you to sit through a performance and you can't wait for it to end. She's a girl. And she's a friend to me. She's my lover, she is so kind to me. No one knows just why you'd ever be there for me. She's a girl who's more of a Christmas tree. She's got so many gifts for me. She's a giving love and tree, Saba. Ah! That's kind of how that one goes. Really nice. Yeah. So I have four more. <clears throat> Next one's kind of a rocker, you know? You know what I mean? You really get that. I, I, need, to, I need to pee. <laughs> that was the first time I missed apartheid.